may be the better known Middle Eastern dip, but Baba Ghanoush is the king of flavour and texture. This stuff is so creamy and packed full of flavour that you'll struggle not to eat a whole bowl of it in one sitting. But with so many variations out there, who makes it best? Is it the Egyptian herby one with a whipped texture, or is it the Syrian and Lebanese style with pomegranate and molasses? Let's find out. Regardless of which one, they both start with roast aubergine flesh. So I've got a whole load of aubergines from the store, which you can cook a few different ways. The best way to cook them is to roast your aubergines over a coal or gas barbecue until their skin is burned and they've softened. Not only will that cook the aubergine flesh, but it'll also give the meat a smoky charred flavor, which really takes it to the next level. If you can't do that though, you can also roast aubergines directly over your stove. This works great on gas stoves, but some ceramic stoves can also achieve a decent char if you place a wire rack above the element. Failing that, you can place your aubergines into a pan and cook those over high heat, but this other way saves a lot of time if you're making a large batch. Per portion of Baba Ghanoush, you'll need 800 grams of aubergines, which is about two large ones, and after washing them, you need to give them a quick poke with a sharp knife. Apparently, if you don't do this, aubergines can fill with steam and explode. So, given my ethnic background, that's the last thing I need to be associated with, so make sure you give them plenty of cuts. Then you just place them on an oven tray, and I'm also adding a red pepper, which we'll use in the second recipe. Pour over some olive oil, which helps conduct heat to the skin, and then rub that all over the aubergines until they are well polished and look slightly inappropriate. Then you just place the tray in the center of an oven heated as high as it can go, and let them cook for between 20 to 30 minutes. After about 15 minutes, I took out the red pepper, which had softened like so, and then at 30 minutes, the aubergines were ready as well. They'll have shriveled up and be soft in the centre, but treat them as if they are filled with hot lava because their flesh will burn you. You want to peel the aubergines while they're still fairly hot to get rid of the skin, but don't do it right after they come out of the oven. The skin will come off easier if they're still a little hot and some tongs make quick work of the hot skin. Once peeled, check that there isn't any skin on the flesh, otherwise it will affect the final texture. Now I saw a TikTok a while back where someone was squeezing the cooked aubergines like toothpaste to get the flesh out, and I wanted to try it using a rolling pin. The first two didn't work great because of how many cuts I made, but the third one actually worked the way I wanted. Just start at the front and work your way backwards. If you're making a lot of baba ghanoush, this will save you a ridiculous amount of time. Of course, you can also just peel the aubergine open and scrape the flesh out with a spoon, but I find that this always results in some skin being left behind. Now those aubergines are going to be packed full of water. We're going to need to get rid of that in a moment, but first we need to mince the aubergine flesh. You see how the flesh is kind of stringy and fibrous? We want to break that down so that we end up with a creamy texture. And that will take a bit of chopping back and forth, but I'd recommend you don't use a food processor because you still want this a little chunky. Once your aubergine is as fine as this, we can drain off all of the water. Add the flesh into a strainer set over a bowl, and then let the aubergines hang out and drain for about 20 to 30 minutes. Just give it a stir every so often. After about half an hour, this is what my aubergine looked like. It's significantly drier than before and ready to be made into baba ghanoush. So to make the Egyptian one, you'll start by adding three tablespoons of yogurt to a mixing bowl with two tablespoons of tahini paste. This kind of baba ghanoush made with tahini is called mutabbal in the Levant region, and it's the main kind you'll find in Egypt. The other one doesn't have tahini at all, but instead uses pomegranate molasses. You'll then juice a lemon and add two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice to the bowl, along with one to two small garlic cloves. These ones were a bit large, so the flavor came out strong. We're also going to add two teaspoons of white vinegar, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon of coriander and cumin, and then a little cayenne pepper for heat. Mix that together really well, then the next step is to add in the aubergine. Fold the tahini sauce into it until they're well combined and fluffy, and that is pretty much the basic baba ghanoush we eat in Egypt. I personally love it a little herby, and so I also add about 15 grams of finely chopped parsley, which really rounds out the dip. The texture doesn't look the best, but the flavours of the dish more than make up for it. Now, I have been looking forward to this for a very long time. Gotta get the proper scooping technique. Lift and scoop. That is a bite full. Mm. Mm. There is just so much flavor in this and it's creamy and it's herby and it is everything you can wish for. And the great thing is it's not heavy at all. Now you might be thinking, surely something this good cannot be healthy, right? But actually, this is pretty healthy and it's relatively high in fiber. I've been trying to eat more fiber as a prebiotic to support the good bacteria living in my gut. And it's almost a cheat code to turn aubergines into such a nice dip. I've also been taking Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic. I genuinely feel that it's supported my gut health in the month that I've been taking it. Let me explain. Seed Health is a research organization that investigates how bacteria can benefit human health and the environment. Among sending bacteria to space, Seed have developed DSO-1, a symbiotic. The outer capsule is filled with prebiotics, and the inside one has 24 strains of beneficial probiotics, making this a two-in-one. Unlike many other brands, DSO-1 only contains strains of bacteria that are scientifically proven to support gut, skin, or heart health, not just in a lab. But it's also packed into Seed's Viacap technology. 
where most prebiotics die due to stomach acid and enzymes on their way to your colon. Viacup is designed to keep 100% of the bacteria alive. If you're looking for a science-backed probiotic, this is the one to get. If you ordered DSO-1 today, you'll get a sustainably packaged refillable glass jar and a travel vial for when you're not home. Then your monthly refills come in a compostable pouch for easy recycling. To try Seed, click the link in the description or use code MIDDLEEATS for 15% off your first month's supply of DSO-1. So in terms of the Syrian or Lebanese Baba Ghanoush, what are the key differences? It's still made with aubergine flesh, but I find that it resembles more of a salad than the Egyptian one, and like I mentioned, this doesn't have tahini and instead has pomegranate molasses. While you're drying out your aubergines, you can prep the vegetables that go into this. The idea is to have all of the vegetables about the same size or smaller than the small chunks of aubergine. First up is about half of an onion, and you're going to chop this into really small cubes. After chopping, you can set them aside for later, or you can soak them in hot water to remove the sharpness of the onion. The next vegetable is a tomato, and again we're going to be chopping this really fine, but before we do that we need to remove as much moisture and seeds from it as we can, so it doesn't water down the dip. Also, is this not the reddest tomato you've seen? I cut this into matchsticks and then into cubes that it was the same size as the onion. For some heat, we'll also do the same thing with the green chilli, though remove the ribs and some of the seeds if you don't want it to be too spicy. There's also the red pepper which we roasted, and I've already peeled off the skin, so it's just a matter of chopping it to size. We're also going to need some herbs, the first of which is mint. Take about 5 grams of leaves off the stalks and then finely mince those until they're about this big. There's also some parsley which we need to mince. This time you can leave the stalks on but get it pretty finely chopped and you want about 10 grams. When those are ready you can start assembling in a bowl by adding the aubergine flesh and then the chopped onion. This is very much an add as much as you want kind of recipe. So I did 2 thirds of the green chilli, the whole tomato and half the red pepper. In terms of herbs I added the 10 grams of parsley and 5 grams of mint with plenty extra for decorating. To give this a sour kick we're going to add 4 tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, then for fat 25 grams of olive oil and then some pomegranate molasses. Most Syrian recipes add a few tablespoons and I'll show you what I mean in a moment. I added 3 quarters of a teaspoon of salt and then started mixing. I then realised I forgot to add a clove of garlic so I minced and added that. Once everything is well combined you're going to have what looks like a salad but with the texture of a dip and this is going to taste pretty awesome. I did however feel that the pomegranate was a bit too powerful and so I tried it again with only 10 grams of pomegranate molasses and also added an eighth of a teaspoon of cumin and this was officially perfect. Now you can eat the baba ghanoush right away and it's going to taste good but if you can summon the willpower to let it rest in the fridge the next day it will taste 10 times better. The same thing applies for the Egyptian one too. To eat these you want to get some thin pita bread, tear off a small piece and then just scoop it up into an incredible bite. But that plate doesn't look super appetising for serving, so to plate it up make a man with baba ghanoush and use the back of a spoon to flatten the sides towards the centre. Once it's kind of flat and wide put the spoon in the middle of the pile and push outwards to make a well. Then you can decorate it using the tip of the spoon to make these dents all the way around, then pour in some olive oil and decorate with some chopped parsley. Let's turn the pretty rough looking baba ghanoush into a great looking dip. For the Levantine kind you'll do the same rough structure, add a pile of tomato or pepper to the centre with some chopped parsley and then top it with some more olive oil. Now finally we get to try this one. Mm. This one is just packed with fresh flavours. There's a lot going on but it is just so so good. Mm. Now when it comes to which one of these two is better, this one is fantastic, it's full of so many fresh flavours, but I feel like it's more like a salad. This one on the other hand, wow, it is the perfect dip. It is just so flavourful and creamy, and honestly, there's no getting better than this. So yeah, if you're a big fan of dips, make sure to check out these next videos. Now excuse me while I finish this.